Hello, I'm just come out to do a couple of little jobs on the flathead. I'm just having a visual inspection in here. Just make sure it's kind of as clean as I can leave it. It's not bad because I have been quite careful to keep everything covered up. The other thing I did the other day, I got some little magnets. Just a couple of little magnets like that. And I'll put them in those little hollows there. So if there's any, any anything, when the oil kind of circulates around, if there's any metallic little bits, they'll stick to them. There's two of those. Uh, and I've just found, found, you know, in amongst the bits that I've saved, a, a two quite nice um, oil deflectors whatever they are I've just noticed that one's got a little bit of a dent in it so I'll probably just give that a little bit of a knock with a hammer yeah that's bent isn't it okay but that one's okay okay so there you go so one goes there now when I had my very first flathead I didn't even know that these came off so I, I, I left them in place so there's a, a little hint for anybody who's who might be looking at one of these motors for the first time and it just acts as a baffle I don't know why they're there to be honest but as I've often said Henry Ford wouldn't have spent money on paying to have those in there if they weren't needed. I'm also doing an inspection of the ports as well because I've got the inlet manifold bolts in the um, Sonic cleaner. See so what I'll do, while I've got it I might take it a bit more up on end, a little bit further it'll go past because of the weight and I'm going to clean these bolt holes out because I've just found my uh, 3 8 bolt thing. This engine's getting really heavy now. And I'm going to use this extra hole that I've put in the stand there to lock it in the, in the vertical position. Right, that's 3 8 wonder how deep these are supposed to be. So a 3 8 thread is 5 sixteenths. Got a load of gloves here. Let's... Previously used. Sod's law dictates. Well, that looks a mess. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm going to just go very carefully in with the drill. I might go into these with actually with a tap because they've got so much crud in them. It's not like it's a clean hole with a damaged thread, is it? It's a completely messed up hole.
I'm very aware of allowing the, uh, you know, the thread to, to, to guide the drill. I'm not, you know, trying to force it. I don't want to cross thread it. This is quite, at least it's, I think it's a plug tap as well. Plenty of mesh come out of there. Yeah, they look all right actually. You can actually see the the uh, you know the the point the pointed drill the end of the drilling at the end. Okay, good. This is one of the most useful things in the shop, having a, a, a little compressor, just a little one, you know, 70 quid, and um, just have it, you know, on a switch. And it's and one of them big rail things by the door, and I can take this up the garden as well and blow the tyres up on the car. Really good, and it reaches all the way to here from the other end of the garage. So I can blow all the tyres up on any of these cars. It's amazing how often you use something like that when you're machining as well. Okay. The reason I put it on end is just so that gravity isn't working against me with trying to put bits down into the, you know, down into the valley and down into the ports. I had a, a German flathead the once and it was a lovely sweet engine really smooth you know factory built factory balanced never been rebuilt but in good condition it came out of a fire engine you know so it was low mileage and um had it in my 40 coupe and i was driving it the one day and i gave it a little bit of you know gave it some stick and suddenly there was a, a rattle towed it home and um, pull the one of the pull the head one of the heads, and there was uh, a lot of dents in the piston, and um, a, a washer or something had gone down into the cylinder and bounced around and caused a lot of damage. It, it hadn't just marked the piston; it had actually broken the piston. So ever since then, I've been a bit wary of, you know, anything. So I'm going to borrow one of these lights off the tripod. I've got the lights on the tripod to, you know, help the camera. And I'm going to inspect each inlet port. Because pretty soon... Pretty soon, these will be buttoned up. Okay, yeah, they're, they're all okay. The, the valley's okay. The magnets are in place. The deflectors are in place. And all the spring retainers, guide retainers, are in place. And properly seated into the seat do you know I'm saying that and I don't think that one is I'll try just giving it a little tap I'll show you what I'm, I'm looking at I'm just looking at that guide retainer there on, on this one can you see that it doesn't look quite seated in compared to the one next to it. It's not actually. I'm going to give it a tap, see what, I, see if I can knock it in. 
I'm sure it'd be all right, but that's not the point, is it? A small hammer. Ah, that's it. That's gone in there. So I'll show you that. Can you see that that is now fully home? So it was worth doing that um, visual inspection, wasn't it? It probably would have rattled in once it started running anyway. I'll, I'll do another careful inspection this side because I wasn't really looking for that when I went down the first time. Now they're great actually, they're fine. Okay, good. Right, next thing on the job is the inlet manifold then. I managed to find another inlet manifold and it's that one over there. It was very, very dirty and very uh, oily inside. One of them engines that have a lot of that waxy, oily buildup. So I've cleaned it and I've just put a bit of black paint on it. And what I'm aware of is that this engine is getting a little bit of rust on it here and there where it's not protected. And if you look at the front here, there, look, look at that. So I'm going to give it a coat of paint as well. You might say to yourself, well, this is worse than watching paint dry, Mark. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe over with thinners. I'm not going to do the heads because I think the heads might be coming off. Well, one of the heads might be coming off. And I wouldn't want to do them until I've talked all the nuts anyway, so I'll leave the heads for now. Good paint this is. It's got that old-fashioned, really strong smell to it. So that's that Air Force grey paint that's on there. Maybe. Can't say for 100% sure. Just a bit of a something to protect it. That degreaser stuff it is really good, you know, and it, but it, there's no oiliness left on the surface to protect it. I'm not going to talk too much because this will just be sped up on the editing, so if I'm talking I have to keep stopping the editing. I'll clean it off that mating surface after. The side will be easier to do with it upside down, so I'll flip it over. Can you see that condensation sitting there? Look, amazing, isn't it? Because it's such a big lump, I suppose, isn't it? A big lump of cast iron. I'll scrape it off the face afterwards. This paint's happier on like the coarse cast surface rather than a smooth pressed steel surface. Not a lot of finesse to this job really. You know, it's just a emergency job really.
No sense in letting it all go rusty again after I've cleaned it all. I'll paint the heads after I've talked all the bolts talked all the nuts you know you got to do so many heat cycles haven't you and they have already got some paint on them one or both of the heads might get changed it's all right isn't it good paint that is you know real good paint got a proper old-fashioned smell to it I don't quite know what that means but that's what it's got I can see some of this side, so I'll just do what I can. I could, I might as well cut that piece off because I don't use it. And that middle piece. If I was doing this, if I was doing this thing again, I'd do it a little bit different. If I had another piece of heavy angle on, I'd make a new one. Obviously, you don't paint the face that the starter bolts onto. Or if you do paint it, you make sure you scrape it off before you fit the starter. No need to be too uh, fussy, really. I say no need to be too fussy. I bet you're thinking, no fear of that, Mart. <laughs> I'm just looking in the camera, make sure it's still recording. I've had so much trouble, I'm becoming paranoid. These were a good find, these were. These were on UK eBay, and I bought um, three oil pans. They were all new old stock. Uh, my mate had the one. There's, there's one hanging up on the wall over there and th this is the third one so you know that was good getting them it's compatible with the British type oil pump and may, maybe others I'm not sure it isn't compatible with the American type starter though I had to modify the opening it's got like an egg shaped opening small with a smaller diameter sort of hole and it fits like um, the Lucas Pilot type starter. It does have the uh, cutter pin in there look, split pin. I don't think the word, the term cutter pin is used um, all over, not for one of them anyway. Okay, I'm not going to bother turning it round but I'm going round the dark side. That'll do. Mm. Yeah, not very happy about the bottom end, but you know, the rest of it looks alright. Just trying to stop it getting all that rust over it. I might just put this over to uh, protect it. Maybe let's look for a gasket. I haven't put any sealant on or anything. I've cleaned all these bolts. I cleaned all the holes as well. I don't know if these are supposed to have washers on them.
Right, hang on, let's have a little sanity check. Is there any reason I can't put this on? The magnets are in. All the things that go here can go down through here, can't they? So let's just at least nip this up. Then it effectively it'll seal it all off. I suppose it'd be a good idea to do the ones that are by the dowels in case the dowels are a little bit tight. Pulling down. What's annoying is I I've tied it up and I've put all the um, all the bolts that I, th I thought I didn't need away. I imagine there's like a torque sequence for these, like on the heads. Needless to say, I bet I haven't followed it. If I sort out some more bolts. Clean them up and get them in. I can uh, paint the top surface. Don't think there's any need to go mad on these, is there? Okay, good. So I need one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, six bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. It ain't hard, is it, Mark? Come on. Ah, now I think that one was a bit longer than the others, you know, and it, it feels like it's just buttoned out. Yeah, it has. So the bright threads at the end. Let's see if I can find a shorter one. That one will do. It's clean, actually. I must have cleaned that one up ready, but... It's a tiny bit short, but it's long enough. I mean... I've often said you, you've got to kind of develop a feel and I, my feel told me that it didn't feel right and it wasn't right because it was tightening down into the bottom of the hole instead of onto the manifold. This um, socket had the end diameter reduced so I could use it on big end nuts and on some manifolds you need that. This, this one ain't too bad because it's a stock forward one but some alloy ones they're a bit tight on some of the bolt holes. Okay, we'll call that good. I'll give it a wipe, quick wipe with the thinners rag. Well, that that's it, isn't it? You've just witnessed the motor being buttoned up in effect. Sump pan's on, the oil pan, and um, the uh, inlet manifold or the valley cover, wherever you choose to call it. I'll just kind of make sure that this here isn't give it another lick of paint. Paint the gasket as well. And the bolts. They're all um, Thick headed bolts as well, you know, the proper manifold bolts. Just drip the paint all over the head. Oh well. Okay, so that hole there is the only inlet to the engine now, isn't it? There's the uh, thingy bob, baffle, and there's a push rod. So I think what I think I'll do, I'll put some grease on this, or some some of that thick oil, 
put that in and I'll put that in as well. Just realised I hadn't painted some of the bolts. I think you're supposed to put the gasket on first, aren't you? And then this. I need to do a little. I've got to tap that thing down there. I was thinking I could put it on there and then tap it down, maybe. I think it was there. Just hammered it down on, on the edge of one of them little anvils that I made. Right, is there a gasket for this? Oh, bollocks. I should have put the thing on first, shouldn't I? Shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, what an idiot. Oh dear. Alright. <laughs> you, you saw me do that, didn't you? I didn't say anything. Which I dare say is how that thing got a dent in it in the first place. Right then, let's put some, uh, let's just shove some down there, stop anything falling in. Shove some down there, just to stop that as well. I think everything else will be okay. Um, a friend of mine has a pair of 59 AB heads or 59A heads, and he said, um, he, he very kindly has donated them to me to use on this engine, because this one has that bad pitting there. So this head at least will be changed. Uh, and if the heads from my friend are, are both serviceable and have different markings, I'll use them both as a pair. If they're the same as that, or only one is serviceable, I'll just change the one. So, thanks Glenn, thanks for that. Appreciate it. This motor's probably going to go in either the truck, the white truck, or the 33 coupe. The chances are it'll probably be the truck. What I'll do before I swap the motor is make sure the truck is in good running order. In other words, the carb and the distributor and the oil pump for that matter on the truck are all in good condition. They were in good condition, but I haven't run it since probably about November, December, November, something like that. I'll get it running and give it a good drive round, make sure the carb and the distributor and the fuel pump are okay then I'll pull the motor and then I'll swap all those parts onto this engine when this engine goes in this engine is, will have its best chance of running straight away because all of those things will have been proven shouldn't have those teething problems I might even use the water pumps off the truck I haven't got a pair of pumps I can just drop on. I'd have to rebuild a pair and I wouldn't know if they're any good. The ones on the truck are okay. When this motor's all installed in, I should be able to basically 
turn the key and go. Should be able to just turn the key, it'll fire right up and just put it into gear and drive away and drive around for, you know, a good half an hour, keeping the revs up. Better than just running it on the drive, revving it, and then re really make it pull, you know, just moderate throttle, pulling through the pulling through the gears, pulling through the revs, pulling through the revs, pulling through the revs, on and off the throttle, on and off the throttle, loading the rings, unloading the rings, loading the rings, unloading the rings. So it'll be good, won't it, to um, for you to, well, I hope it will, it will be good, and I hope you'll find it interesting, you know, to be basically, I'll have the camera set up in the truck, and we'll basically turn that key and go for that drive, that first drive with the, with the, uh, this uh, re, re, rebuilt, but only rebuilt in as much as repaired engine. Okay, I'm going to call it good at that for today. So thanks a lot then. Bye.